Hi everyone, welcome to a special live broadcast edition once again of the Astro Room. Thank you for everyone that's joining me right now. I'm seeing the live chat. Uh, I see you, John. Uh, your honor, John Daly. Daly, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, it is March 14th, 2024. Already for some of you, March 15th. We are currently going to be doing live space news while we live image with a smart telescope. You are seeing it on the right side of your screen. And tonight what I'm trying to image is the uh, Horsehead Nebula. I have so many things to surprise for you, uh, for all of you, and I can't wait to show it. I can't wait to show it. And follow along with me on this ride. We're going to have fun tonight. And we are currently looking at, if you're seeing there on the left side of my screen, hope everyone can hear me okay. We are trying to get this right now. So the Horsehead Nebula and the Flame Nebula together at once. And I am celebrating today so many good things. Today, March 14th, is Pi Day, P-I Day, the mathematical Pi Day. Uh, not only that, but... <laughs> Something really cool that happened that I was not expecting is the Astro Room has reached 500 subscribers. So thank you to every one of you who have been subscribing. If you haven't yet, if you're watching this right now, you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. That just lets me know that you want to continue seeing more and more of the Astro Room live, more and more videos. Uh, it helps me know that you're enjoying this content, that you find it valuable. And here we are trying to image the Flame Nebula. It's, it's already coming in as you can kind of see it there. And um, did you know that the Horsehead Nebula, these objects that we're looking at right now, it is one of the most photographed regions in space. It's super iconic, uh, super, super famous. We are also going to image something else tonight, and it is a star. Now, I know what you're thinking this might sound boring, but it will not be boring because I have a special trick and I will show you how I do it. And it is one of the, I'm going to do a red super giant. You probably already know what it is, but it's been trending in the news again. I'll let you know why. And I'm going to show you a really cool trick you can do when you are imaging uh, stars. So stay with me. You're going to like this. It's going to be fun. Uh, you're in for other surprises too. I have special space entertainment news that you're not going to want to miss guaranteeing that 99.9% .9 of you that are watching are going to like this so stay with me and before we get into the space news and other things and while we let the sea star continue imaging live and see if we can get the horse head in there and the flame nebula um let's see what you can image right now what else can you image in the night sky tonight uh, this coming week, my top picks that you can image. I will say that something very special right now, if you're able to image this right now, I would do it, but I'm trying to really get the horse at Nebula. So try to get the moon and you know why? Because this crescent beautiful moon right now, if you're able to get this, go do it while you're watching Astro Room. The Pleiades and the crescent moon are in conjunction right now, folks. And... Let's go to the sky uh, stargazing or sky catalog here. If we go to the moon, I'm not going to go to it, but if you see, oh, let me go back to it. If we get to the moon, the it, you can see that the Pleiades are there, right? You see that right there? They're in conjunction. So you might not be able to fit the Pleiades with the crescent moon in one frame, at least with the sea star. Maybe with other tele smart telescopes you can. But, uh, you know, see how much you can get because this is going to this is going to look beautiful in your scope. Uh, let's go back. Let's go back because we're doing horse head. But uh, that's something that you should look out for tonight. If you can Tr try to get this, uh, it it's it's a gorgeous two objects that you can get crescent moon and Pleiades. They're just beautiful. The seven sisters. Um, another thing that you're going to want to get this weekend. Uh, this is a top top picks guys because March is Messier Marathon month, month as I'm sure a lot of you know see how many Messier objects you can get in one night or see how many you can get in this month of March 
you're gonna wanna look this up, okay? If you haven't already, these are interacting galaxies and they're wonderful objects to get. Messier 81 and Messier 82, okay? Bode's Galaxy, Messier 81. The reason why these are so fun is because Bode's Galaxy is one of the brightest galaxies in the night sky because it's located about 11.5 million light years from Earth. So it's a gorgeous object to look at through a telescope, especially if you live in dark skies. But I'm telling you, even if you don't live in dark skies, you'll be able, you know, I'm at a Bordel 8, you'll still be able to get really nicely the uh, these Messier objects. And when I say there's interacting galaxies, because Messier 81 and Messier 82, these interact with each other. Messier 82 is known as the Cigar Galaxy due to its very interesting shape. Uh, it's a very funny shape, but I this is one that you guys are going to want to get this this weekend if you can, or tonight as well. Uh, these make a great pair, and we're going to look for it in the Sea Star uh, catalog, okay? So you can make sure you actually can get this in one frame. Let me show you. Let's go to it. Okay, we're going to center these, and oops. Try it one more time. There we are. So you see it right there on the right side of your screen. M81, M82. See how much you can get right there? You know, if you can just line it up really nice and try to get it in one frame, you should be able to. And I think this is a top pick. Go get Bode's Galaxy. Go get uh, the Cigar Galaxy next to it. Uh, these are really, really nice. And now everyone, uh, before I go on also, it's in the Ursa Major Constellation, by the way. Something that I want to get to. Let's start off with some a little bit of spacings here. Let's go back to the imaging of Horsehead. And uh, let's see. I, I really want this to come out, guys. Remember, I live in really light blue skies. I've had this come out amazing before. Um, I have a video where I show how to edit and post-process this. So, uh, you know. Watch that if you haven't already, but I, you know, I think I imaged it for like 60 minutes for like an hour and it looks amazing. But anyway, let's move on. Space news. Did you know that you can actually observe, look at what the James Webb telescope is currently observing? This is really cool. This is a trending new topic. Uh, it's been out for uh, a couple, or I would say a, a few days now. This is the uh, Space Telescope Science Institute. The website is space telescope, space telescope live.org. You can go to this. You can also look at Hubble, but we can look at what the Webb Space Telescope is observing. Uh, like I said, this just came out. This is new. This is so fun, everyone. Uh, if you notice, it has the time right now. It's March 15th. This is what it's looking at right now, right? Uh, and this is so cool. You can check out observation details. It's telling you it's looking at uh, stellar populations, interstellar medium, galaxy evolution. That's what it's studying right now. Uh, it tells you who the principal investigator behind this study is right now. It is very cool. Not only that, but you can also click on the next target that it's going to see, right? You click on next target and it'll take you to that. Let me click on it real quick. Oh, I guess that's what it's going to be. It's going to be right underneath there. But it can show you previous targets. There we go. Next target. It works now. Check it out. That is pretty neat. Um, we'll let it come into focus, come into view. There it goes, little by little. And yeah, you can also see previous targets. Um, but it is, you know, latest target, what it's looking at now, slewing to it again. Uh, I thought this was really neat. You can do that with the Hubble. And... If you go to their Twitter page, um, you will notice that it will show you some of the objects it has been looking at, okay? And something interesting about it is that it tells you which scientist or which astronomer has asked to look at these objects because what it does um, is that what's happening is that these scientists or astronomers are in a queue and I and and you know this because it'll tell you this the you know the so-and-so telescope or the Hubble or the JWST is looking at such and such cluster for Dr. So-and-so for you know astronomer so-and-so for Dr. So-and-so 
it is really neat, guys. Uh, what's happening is that these scientists are in a queue, literally in a queue. Perhaps this queue is already, I'm sure you might be waiting for a year, right? As these scientists, depending on where you are in the queue to look at certain objects that they want to study in deep space with the James Webb telescope, even with the Hubble. I thought that was pretty neat. So check it out when you get the chance. Um, it's it's really interesting and going on to other news last week i talked about spacex with their starship i did anybody watch the live launch okay let me know if you saw this uh because it actually went through the live launch was this morning march 14th uh early in the morning from boca chica texas the last two launches if you recall i mentioned they had exploded after shortly after they had launched and this time it did not it did not launch. Oh, look, everybody. I think we're getting the horse. The horse head is coming out. <laughs> we see the flame. It's pretty prominent. But you're seeing, if you if you look towards the bottom left on, you know, I'm talking about in the Sea Star app, right? You're on the right side of your screen. If you look towards the bottom sort of left, the horse head is there. Let me see if I can adjust the brightness. Can you see that? Give me a thumbs up or something on the live chat if you can see that. Give me, give me a, give me a little support there. Um, this is, this is so cool. I can't get over it. This, this stuff never gets old. This stuff never gets old. But um, it's coming out. It's coming out. That's that's nice. So anyway, let me focus back on these space news. So the uh, SpaceX Starship did launch. Did make it. Go watch that. It's on their website, SpaceX.com. You can look at it on their Twitter page as well. This actually did launch and it did phenomenal. It's amazing. This thing is bigger than the Statue of Liberty, a uh, hundred feet taller. This thing is huge. It's a monster vehicle. But speaking of that, the reason why I have this other site up is because did you know, you probably do, you've heard of Blue Origin, okay? Blue Origin is, I want to say it's competing with SpaceX. It's all a space race. We all know that. It's all a space race. And basically, who's going to get to Mars first? Is it Blue Origin, the company by, you know, Jeff Bezos, right? Slash Amazon. Is it going to be Blue Origin slash Jeff Bezos? Or is it going to be SpaceX slash Elon Musk? What, what, are you, what are you guys thinking about it? Um, you know. This is very interesting, you know, they want to see who can also get to the moon first and all of that. So what's going on is that Blue Origin has built their own mega, mega rocket. Okay, same thing. It's named uh, the new Glenn after um, the astronaut John Glenn, of course. And it is also one of the largest vehicles ever built. Um, it'll also be reusable. I feel like it's kind of competing with the Starship from SpaceX um, and NASA, let me show you guys this news. NASA has actually chosen uh, Blue Origin to study Mars magnetosphere. So they're gonna have a mission. There will be a test launch also with this monster rocket, okay, with this uh, new Glenn rocket. And NASA has chosen it to do the escapade mission, which will study Mars magnetosphere. And the whole point of that is just basically to study the weather of Mars magnetosphere. So that way it'll help scientists when astronauts are going to go do go to Mars, go to the moon, do interplanetary stuff, you know, in the future, uh, they'll know how the weather um, affects will affect the astronauts. So it's very, very interesting. Um, so yeah, uh, is, 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 I think it's whether you, you know, whether you like SpaceX or not, whether you like, you know, these, these space companies, you have to admit it is very interesting what they're accomplishing and what they're doing because, you know, obviously not everybody can do this and, uh, it is just taking, uh, astronomy and space and, and kind of bringing it down to earth, right? Bringing it down to all of us to be able to watch live streams of them testing rockets and testing all these test launches is, is pretty fun. So what do you think, guys? Let me know in the comments or in the live chat, who's going to, who's going to make it first? Or do you, do you, 
think, you know, is it going to be SpaceX? Is it going to be Blue Origin? I think SpaceX is is going above and beyond at this point with everything they're proving. But uh, yeah, um, Blue Origin will have their test launch, like I mentioned, later on this year. I'll keep you posted um, as we, you know, get into that. And guys, okay, I this is what I want to show everyone. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because this is what I was saying. This is my space entertainment news. Wow, the Horsehead Nebula. I'm seeing your comments, guys. Thank you. As someone just said, Project Electrica. Thank you that you can see the horse head. Um, hey, and you were watching the re-entry of the launch? Okay, okay. I see that you were you were watching stuff too. Pretty cool, pretty cool, yeah, of the Starship. Okay, so this is what I want to get to. My mind is all over the place, guys. There's so many things I want to share, but the horse head nebula is looking awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, someone's asking me, how am I getting the sea star imaging into my YouTube stream? That's an excellent question. So I use, um, there's a software called, uh, it, it's for streaming specifically. So it's called OBS. There's a lot of different softwares, but, uh, you, yeah, with basically with OBS, you can stream. I have my, uh, my device, my tablet, okay, I am currently streaming imaging with the C-Star on my iPad, and it's actually hooked up to uh, my computer right now. There, you know, it's running the cables, okay, the, the USB-C cables, are, it's, it's hooked up, and then I connect it to the streaming software. That's a great question, though. Uh, and then I'm able to literally live stream, so uh, yeah. Pretty cool. It's fun. Um, anyway, here we go. Are you ready for these news? Tell me that you like this. Tell me that you like this. Does everyone remember? I'm going to pull up these sites right now. Does everyone remember watching the movie Tron? I'm going to tell you right now, I have been waiting for a sequel for so long. Okay. Obviously, I'm a millennial, so the first one that I saw was not the 1982 Tron. That was not the first one I saw. I saw the one in 2010, okay? The one that uh, Disney did in, in 2010, and I loved it. I loved it, and I feel like, I thought in three years, like the sequel was gonna come out, never did. But I have exciting news. And so what I wanna say is, if you have not seen, if you have not yet seen the newer 2010 version, okay, of uh, Tron, then you should go look at it. The 2010 is really cool if you've only seen the 1982 version. Let me know in the comments, all of you, all of you who are watching right now in the live chat, which one have you seen? Have you seen the 1982? You probably have. It's iconic. Have you seen the new one, Tron Legacy, okay? If you haven't seen one or the other, go watch them. Go watch them. I'll tell you why, okay? So I loved both of them. So I, like I said, I saw the first one, Tron Legacy Disney 2010. That was the first one that I saw, okay? And then I said, you know what? Let me watch Tron, the original, because that's the classic. And I loved it too. Now, think about the fact that if you watch the 1982 one now, you're going to be like, oh, those graphics are like not the best. I mean, come on, it's the 80s. But at that time, that was advanced. Guys, th th that was super advanced. So watch it because it's a fun movie to watch. Watch your 2010 and not just that, everyone, but check it out. I'm trying to pull it up for you guys right now. Um, this is what I wanted to show you. Guess what? Tron... Another movie sequel is coming. It's in production right now. Do you want to see this? Think about it. This is going to be pretty cool. In no way is this sponsored. In no way, you know, obviously this is not sponsored by Disney, uh, by any film company. I wish it was. But this, I think, I've been waiting for this for so long. Okay, you can watch already. So Tron Legacy, the 2010 uh, John, I see you telling me that you haven't seen it, but you will. Check it out. It's on Disney Plus. If you have Disney Plus, check it out. Um, or maybe you can do a quick rental maybe from YouTube itself. You can actually rent them, uh, you know, if you don't have Disney Plus. But uh, it's really cool. It really is. 
Uh, someone's telling me nothing beats the original. Yeah, Project Electric I see you there. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, yeah, you're so right. I agree with what you're saying. Um, you know, but it's fun to watch both of them. It really is, guys. So finally, a new one is coming. Okay. Um, it is currently being filmed in Vancouver, Canada. And it actually wasn't... The only reason why it hasn't come out sooner is because they said COVID stopped everything. As, as the pandemic stopped so many things. But the very interesting thing is that Jared Leto is going to play one of the main characters, if not the main character. I'm not sure if they're going to bring back the ones from the other movies. That, that would be super cool if they make cameo appearances, the ones from the other movies. But I'm looking forward to this. They said uh, with this one, it's called Tron Ares. And it's going to be talking about humankind's first encounter with AI beings. And you know that topic is way trending, AI. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Um, it's not going to be released till 2025 because it's in production. It's filming now. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for this. So, so yeah, that was, uh, that's what I wanted to let you guys know. Um, and anyway, I wanted to tell all of you, uh, seriously, thank you so much for all of you who have been supporting this channel. My channel has, honestly, the Astro Room has been growing faster than expected i i did not think uh this was going to grow this fast i am celebrating that tonight that today we hit 500 subscribers already this has come so quick this has come so quick and i was so excited to see it today uh that you know that this happened and I want you to know that every time you subscribe, it just shows to me that you like this content, like I was saying earlier. So please, another way to support, and some of you have already done it. Some of you have been already, who are even watching this live stream right now. Thank you for your support with the buy me a coffee link. Okay, the buy me a coffee. Uh, there's several of you who have done it already. Thank you so much. Once again, just letting me know you continue to want this content, you know. Um, it's not easy to get all this ready to put, put all this together, but I love it. You know, I love it. I I'm so, I have a lot of passion for space, for telescope, for imaging. Uh, and you know, who doesn't want to see live telescope imaging? And thank you so much. The buy me a coffee is basically a donation that you can make to the channel, to the Astro Room, to help me reach my goals, to help me make my live streams better. Help me upgrade my C-Star, help me upgrade the channel, the technology, the, you know, the computer that I'm using, everything to get this better and better for you guys. And uh, the buy me a coffee is super simple. There's a link in the description if you don't know what that is, but you can do a very small donation uh, to the channel and uh, you don't have to like do like a login or sign up or any of that uh, craziness. It's very quick, very easy. So check it out in the description. And thank you so much for, for you that are, you know, have used this. Um, it is, just means a lot to me that you're enjoying this. My, the channel is growing unexpectedly uh, pretty, pretty quick. And, you know, it's it's just been a joy, a true joy uh, to, to do this. So, um, okay, what I was telling you guys, I keep, there's so many things I want to image tonight. What I was telling you guys is I want to... I kind of want to do the moon with the Pleiades. However, have you heard that Beetlejuice uh, has been massively trending? I'm going to close out uh, these other pages. And Beetlejuice is once again trending, uh, folks, because there is something that they're seeing in telescopes that they haven't seen, I guess, before. Uh, it says it's basically like it's as if it's boiling and it's creating an illusion in telescopes. Um, and if you have been imaging Betelgeuse, compare it to previous images. What I want to do right now is, um, okay, I think we're good with the horse head and the flame nebula. It, it looks awesome. Let me see if I can adjust it. There's something, I, I want to move to Betelgeuse. I'll tell you why. You might think, oh, super boring. It's just a start. I'm gonna show you a little special trick, okay? Guys, before I do that, I forgot I wanted to show this. I have it on my desk. I know I'm all over the place, but you're gonna love this. I don't know who still writes letters. If you live in the US, I don't know if it's also in the UK or other parts of the world. The postal office, guys, they have James Webb telescope stamps 
even if you're not gonna send any letter who's who sends letters in the mail nowadays i don't know but this is cool for a collection look at how cool this is okay tell me this isn't cool what do you guys think if you, all of you that are watching it are you watching it live right now is this pretty neat that there's like james webb telescope stamps this is pretty pretty cool i forgot that i wanted to show this tonight um yeah so at the u.s post office you can get it i don't know if they still have any more i got this a while back uh these are pretty cool okay moving along moving along um so i want to image beetlejuice right now you're gonna follow me i'm gonna go outside and there is a trick to imaging stars that is really really fun okay let me know if you've done this i will give you the behind the scenes as to how i'm doing it first of all should i go out? maybe i don't need to go outside i think we've got beetlejuice and clear i don't think i need to go check anything on this telescope but let me go to the sky atlas let's switch it up we saw the beautiful horse and nebula and flame nebula if you haven't done it like i said go do it there is something i want to show you when you do stars and i will actually actually i do have to go outside in a minute to show you this okay we have to go outside to the telescope and let me pull up beetlejuice in there why is this there we go there we go okay let's get it hopefully nothing's in the way i think it's really high up and let's have the telescope go to this not popping up. Give me a sec here. There's a little trick I want to show you guys. Yep, we're going to switch object. So, the what I wanted to say with Beetlejuice, I want to get it because so scientists are saying that uh, this red super giant star, as you know, it's, it's absolutely, first of all, huge. Obviously bigger than Earth, bigger than the sun. It's monster huge, bigger than the planets. Um, I don't think we can really imagine just how big it is, but um, astronomers are saying that they are noticing lately that it's absolutely boiling to the point where it's creating this illusion in telescopes. Let's see if we can see that. Um, and but the let's see. So yeah, we're, we're getting to it. The telescope is going. I'm going to have to go outside for this in a minute. I'll, I'll, I'll show you why. I'm going to show you guys a trick. So let's get let's get the telescope on there. I'm going to try to see if you can also see me as I'm outside with the sea star. I'm going to try to get the, the security cam or the camera up outside. Um, and see if you can see me while I do something out there. Okay. Looks like we got it. Looks like we got Beetlejuice. And let's wait for it to come up. Look at this. So Beetlejuice is, while we wait for it to come up, Beetlejuice is super trending. Um, oh, I think I need to take off the light pollution filter off that. Let's see if it'll let me take it off in a bit. So it is, look at this. They're saying uh, it feels like science fiction movie these results that they're getting um, is very, very cool. So it's creating these weird illusions lately. So you know how they said it was gonna go supernova or it's going to go supernova, they just don't know when or pretty soon? Yeah, so I, I'm wondering if that's why this is happening. But I have, um, there is a viewer of the Astro Room. His name is Mark, I don't know if you're watching Mark. Uh, let me know if you are. He has sent me, shared images with me. Um, you can share images with me also via the community tab in the Seastar app. You know how you can share images there with everyone? You can tag me so I can see your images. Feel free to do it. I love seeing other people's images. Tag me at, uh, at Astro Room and, and, and yeah, and I'll see your images. If you've been imaging, imaging Beetlejuice and you put it on there, let me know or anything else. But uh, okay, John, John, I see that you're saying there you image Beetlejuice with your my uh, my last clear sky, okay, okay, that's nice. Um, I wonder if you imaged it earlier. Compare the images. Have you seen anything recent? I wonder when your last imaging was of it. I'm curious, but we have it here. Okay, let me take off the light pollution filter. 
and give me a sec here. I want to show you guys such a cool trick. Okay, we're good. We're good. We okay. No light pollution filter, and I'm gonna start hitting the stack stack imaging. I've done some cool stuff with stars with Sirius. You guys have to do it too. Um, let's start this one now. Have you ever imaged any of these major stars, Betelgeuse, Sirius, any of them? Oh, um, for a long time, like leave your, your scope running with any of your, whoever, you know, whatever smart telescope you have, whatever telescope, leave it, let it stack for a while. Like even after 15 minutes, it looks really cool. Let it stack for 30 minutes, 45 minutes. It's awesome. Um, so it's, it's just imaging. We're barely at 20, you know, 20 seconds. Let's, let's try to give it a, a few more seconds, but there's something I want to show you that you can do. And it's a lot of fun when you image stars to get these stars just looking awesome. Um, let's look it up here while we let it do its thing. Let the sea star do its thing. Yes, that's what we want. Oh, I see you. Uh, Project Electric Guy, you got the Monkey Head Nebula the other night. Oh, that is cool. Oh, that is cool. If you put that on the community tab, uh, le let me look at it. I would like to see that. What Bordeaux skies do you live at? Actually, um, John and Project Electric Guy that's watching, what Bordeaux skies are you guys at? I'm curious. Or, you know, are you guys in the city, suburbs, or where are you guys? Um... Yeah, but uh, tag me, tag me, uh, Project Electric Eye, if you do use the community tab, no pressure, but if you, you know, tag me on one of your images, if you put the monkey head on there, let me, I want to I check it out. That must, that must have been fun. Uh, okay, you see, Beetlejuice is getting brighter and brighter, you see it there on, on the right side of your screen. And, okay guys, I'm going to do it now, it's been a minute, it's been a minute, and literally a minute of stacking. I'm going to go outside, I'll be right back. Stay with me. This is going to look cool, okay? And let me know if you've done this too or not. If you haven't, I'll show you how. Um, I'm going to leave this running. Give me a quick minute. I'm going to see if my camera can come on. Let me see if my outside camera can come on, okay? I'll be right back, guys. Okay, I have it, I have it, uh, my camera is up outside, so I want you guys to see me out there. I need to have some type of night vision or something. Can you see it? Don't tell me I'm going to have technical difficulties, but... Um, there it is. There's a camera. Okay, see if you can see me. That red spot on the left side, or right there in the center, okay? My team is helping me. <laughs> That red spot, that's good. I'm going to be standing there. That's my sea star. Okay, I'm going to go outside right now.
Okay. Did you guys see me out there? I'm going to turn off the camera now. It was dark. I need to get some type of night vision or the, the night mode on for those cameras outside. I'm trying to see if you can see it, but basically, let's see if it'll come into view. Let's wait a little bit here. I went outside and used a diffraction spike. And what it's going to do is get the pointed star look. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to get right now. Um, oh, to tag me, someone is, okay, you're asking, what do you use to tag me in the community section? Uh, so when you're, it tells you to write, you can write something on there when you post your photo, your image, it'll tell you to use the at sign. What you can do is use the at sign. It doesn't tell you that. Sorry. Just use the at, at whoever, and it'll tag someone. So we put at you know, the at sign at Astro Room, and it'll automatically like come to me. So, um, yeah, just use the at sign. You can tag anyone on there, but, uh, yeah. Um, okay. looks like my C star just went, <laughs> got disconnected. I was messing with it outside, but, uh, anyway, what I wanted to say is that what you can do Let's pull it back up. I went outside and put a diffraction spike on it. Here it is. I have two of these. This is uh, to, in order to get the star to look with those pointed, the pointed look, the classic pointed look. And you can image it. I have pictures of it. If you haven't seen my video, um, there's a video that I have on how to get the diffraction spikes, okay? And with that, you can, you can see my images on there. I've done several different stars and it looks really, really cool. Um, so what you're going to use is this, there's a link in the description already. If you're wondering how to get this, there's a link in the description of how to get it. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. Uh, a lot of different places sell it, but, uh, they come in packs. I the one I have outside, this one has four. I don't know if you can see that, but this one has four diffraction spikes, you know, on there. The one that I have on it right now has six. So, um, yeah. And looks like I'm losing my connection uh, of, of my C-Star outside. That's not good. But, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, feel free to do that. It is really, really neat. I'm hoping that I, it, it'll, it'll show up. It'll come up uh, on here quickly. I don't know why but uh yeah so let's keep it coming let's let's keep let's see what can what can show up here any hopefully any minute now it's trying to maybe it's a little windy we had um really severe weather today i was almost worried that i wasn't going to be able to do a live stream we had severe here in southern california uh it was it's high winds and when we have when we have a high winds alert it's actually really can be really dangerous. They can go up to 60, 80 miles per hour. So I was really worried we weren't going to be able to live stream, but you know, I wouldn't be able to have the scope outside as dangerous like that, but thankfully the winds have calmed down. Okay. Um, so yeah, John, you said go try when you get home. Yeah. Try to tag me on there guys. Let me see your, yeah. Uh, post an image. Oh, John, you're in Bordeaux four five. Oh, that's, that's nice. Wow, I wish I was in Bordeaux 4 or 5. Oh man, that's, that's, that's nice. Yeah, you must have some nice shots of Andromeda, uh, of, se of galaxies, like they look really good in Bordeaux 4. Oh man, yeah. I mean, if my, if the Andromeda looks good in a Bordeaux 8 over here, Bordeaux 7, Bordeaux 8, uh, I'm sure it looks great in, wow, in half of that. You're in half of my, uh, my Bordel skies. Okay, there we have it. Guys, it's, I feel like it, it, we must have some, you know, it must be the, the atmosphere tonight or something, but you can see this actually, if I zoom in, you can see it's getting the spikes, but it's not looking as awesome as I've got it, gotten it on other nights. Let's see if I can change the contrast here, the brightness. I love that I can play around with that. A lot, a lot of images failing 
the stack what? Oh, you said you just tagged me. Oh, cool. I'll check it out. Thank you, Project Electric Eye. That's a cool name, by the way. That's a very cool handle you have there. I like that. Um, I'll check it out with, uh, as soon as I can, as soon as I'm, I'm done with the live stream tonight. I'll check it out. Uh, where, are you, where are you guys at exactly? I think... Let me see. One of you told me here. Did, did I read it here? Where are you guys at exactly? Your location? Like what state do you live in or what what part of the world do you live in? Um, okay, Project Electric Eye is saying some dark skies in Illinois. You drove over. Oh, cool. You drove to dark skies in Illinois. So maybe, okay, very cool. Do you live in Illinois or you said you drove there? Um, yeah. And John, I think you, am I, am I correct when I say you're in Delaware, I believe? Okay, Project Electric Eye, West Central Indiana. Oh, I've never been to Indiana. Huh, very cool, very cool. Look at you, look at you. And, and uh, do you live in the city or how's your skies out there? Are you, are you in nice dark skies or are you in bright city skies like me? John, Delaware, that's right. That's right, very cool. Wow, that's cool, that's cool. I've never, I've never been to Delaware either. Um, I'm going to New York soon, but uh, also, oh guys, oh guys, we got it, yes! I'm so excited. <laughs> it must have come up without me, I, without even realizing it. Okay, there you go, we got it, yes. Thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for your patience. That's what those spikes do. You see that? It's a beauty. Some people think it's like, um, you know, not natural, blah, blah, blah. You know what? Obviously, it's not natural, but this is like the classic iconic look of stars, right? If you think about, um, if you think about like, when you think of stars, as since you're, since we were children, right? Or when you know when you think when you watch movies or you know or something like when you think of stars you think of them as pointed but when we look up at the night sky we know they're not like that stars are not naturally pointed but isn't it cool to get the classic look just get these john you're saying you're looking into getting the star spikers oh arthur just joined us thank you so much arthur from o ohio you can't stargaze tonight because of thunderstorms i feel you yeah oh man Okay, Killian, Kansas. Cool. How many are how many are watching? I didn't realize there's a uh, so, so, there's so many watching right now. There's a well decent amount of people watching. Thank you so much, everyone. Killian, uh, you were gonna go outside, but you couldn't see anything because of the clouds. Oh man, yeah, it's it's a bummer, man. We just want clear skies. Okay, Project Electric Eye, big storms tonight. Tornadoes through Indiana and Ohio. Look at that, man telling you guys let me know are you liking this what do you think about the john you said you're gonna you're looking into getting these spikes so okay let, let me tell you real quick guys they're they're super cheap to get first of all super cheap uh what happens is there's people that are custom making this like 3d printing them which is really really cool uh so you can get a little set you can get, there's, this is with four spikes. Like I said, the one outside that I have on the sea star right now, guys, this is looking awesome. Out, <laughs> it's looking great on the sea star. So the one that I have on right now has six. Do you see that it, there's six, there's six lines there, right? Right, you see the six lines? So the one I have here, if I want less lines, I have four. I have a, a little spike with four, but come on, the more, <laughs> the more diffraction spikes, when I say lines, I mean the spikes. The more the more diffraction spikes, the better. So, um, yeah, this this is cool, guys. Get you one of these, and okay, like I was saying, some people say, "Oh gosh, it's like fake or whatever," but it's fun to show other people. Like, hey, I got a, you know when when you tell them I like your I don't know your family, your friends, your spouse, your your kids. If you're like, check it out, I have a star. 
uh, live imaging right now through the sea star and they're like, they just see like a circle, <laughs> you know, for, for some that are not really into space or don't really understand the whole concept of what, why we're so excited imaging stuff in space. Um, you know, they might think it's boring when they just see like a little circle, but they're going to think it's cool when you put a diffraction spike, right? And they'll think it's so cool. They'll think it's so cool because they're like, oh man, check it out. It's like the real star. Like, do stars really look like that? We know they don't, but they're going to think it's just really cool. We're not trying to deceive anyone, <laughs> but they're going to think it's so cool to see like, you know, the iconic classic spiky star pointed look that we're used to seeing when you watch a Disney movie or something, right? Um, it's fun. Guys, check it out. It's only been stacking. It says the total stack time is 3 minutes and 40 seconds. And uh, it looks incredible. And I am in heavily polluted skies. You know, I don't want to say heavily like, I guess you would say Manhattan, New York City, or Los, Los Angeles is super heavy, more than where I live. But, you know, it, it's, it's still work. I'm close to you know, one of the biggest metropolitan cities in the world. Um, and um, when I look at, at here where I, in my location, when I look up, I, you know, with the naked eye, I know I can see the three stars of Orion, right? The classic three stars, Altenac and stuff. Um, I can see, you know, with the naked eye, Sirius, Beetle, just the major stars, right? I, you know, I can see the Pleiades with the naked eye. So, you know, not bad, not bad. Um, so... But uh, there's people, like, if you live in really dark skies, I'm thinking those of you in Bortle 4, uh, you can probably see the fuzzy patch of Andromeda with the naked eye. Maybe let me know if you can't. I think maybe you might be able to. You know, obviously, I or you can see the, can you see the Milky Way when it's visible? Can you see it? Can you see the, the haze of the Milky Way? I wish I could see that. I have to travel about two hours, two and a half hours to go see that uh, to a famous national park out here. Um, but it's cool that, you know, despite the light pollution where I am, look at how incredible Beetlejuice looks. I mean, it, it's, it's, this is awesome. Guys, what looks beautiful too, go do, uh, Sirius. If you do the star Sirius, it looks beautiful. It's blue. You know, right now you're seeing that orange glow. Um, but, uh, it looks beautiful if you do serious. It looks really nice. Thank you, all of you that are still with me watching. This is pretty cool. I did not think the live stream, I did not think I was gonna do it for this long. The live stream, I, I didn't know if any, you know, how many were gonna join. So this is, this is so fun. I know it's really late for some of you. It's only, uh, almost nine o'clock here, p.m., uh, it's still March 14th here in my side, my side of the world. Um, yeah. So, you know, thank you for, for staying with me. Thank you for staying with me. I wonder if we can move on later to the moon or maybe to Sirius. But I was saying, yeah, go do like other stars. It looks beautiful when it's blue and you have a spike on it. Take pictures of it. I mean... I don't even have to edit this photo, right? I use the adjust feature and the brightness feature in the C-Star app. And I i mean, I, I should just, you know what? Let me take a picture of this. Let me have some, <laughs> I can share that to the community tab too. You can find me on there as Astro Room. You can start following me on there on the community tab on the C-Star. And I'll probably post this one or I'll post it on the community tab on YouTube. Uh, yeah, so I can have some, I think I forgot to get the horse head nebula picture but that's okay i have others from other days but um yeah let's save these images because yeah it's just looking nice wow at only four and a half minutes of stacking this is awesome this is super cool wow arthur you're saying where you're at Okay, 11.54, you're on the East Coast, right? Oh my goodness, yeah, it's late over there, it's almost midnight. Thank you so much for, for staying here with me. Wow. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. 
The weekend is coming soon, and I hope all of you who don't have the clear skies can get your clear skies. Charles! Charles, uh, I love... Thank you! I love your channel. Thank you so much, Charles. Charles Ellington. Ah, oh, that means a lot to me. Thank you so much. I'm working really hard on this channel, guys. I, um, I have a 9 to 5 job already. I'm really busy. I'm a really busy person. Um, I also do volunteer work in the community. So I'm very busy. But, uh, you know, trying to make the time to do this for, for all of you. I, I'm basically, everyone, I want you to know it, the, that I, I, the reason why I did this channel is I wanted to do a channel that wasn't already out there regarding the sea star. Everything that I wanted to know about the sea star and that I thought was so fun and it wasn't being shared already on, on YouTube, I was like, why is no one talking about this stuff? That's how I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm just going to do it. Um, so it's been a lot of work, but it's been so fun. Cause like I said, I'm so passionate about space. Um, you know, since I was a child, I've always loved everything space. Um, I have a Celestron telescope. Can you guys see it? I have it back here. And yep. I, I love, I love, uh, I love space. Obviously all of you do too. All of you that are watching and yeah, so Thank you um, for supporting this channel. Thank you for watching. This just means that I should continue going because, you know, I already have a 9 to 5. I want this to be my new full time. I, I want to get, get rid of my 9 to 5 that, that, that I'm doing now and do this instead. But I can't do it until I have more people that subscribe. So if you're not subscribed yet, please, please subscribe. Um, and that will just show me that, you know, that will help the channel grow. That's, I mean, really, that's what happens, guys. If you guys can just, you know, when you see a video, you know, let me know what you think. Let me know what kind of things you want to see. You know, all this stuff, your subscriptions, uh, all of that is what's going to help this channel grow. The more and more I can I can get, the more this can eventually become my, my new full-time. And I can dedicate more time, more time to live streams, not just at night, but during the day. When it's not so late for some of you guys that live on the other side, right? That, you know that are on the East Coast. So yeah, I can do this a little bit earlier because like I said here, barely it's about to be 9 p.m. where I am. <laughs> so, um, hello uh, from North Carolina. Look at you guys are, wow. I think everyone that's on is like, a lot of you guys are from the East Coast and it's so late over there. Thank you guys from North Carolina. G. Soman 1960, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for your support. Um, John is saying you were in Possibility in 1969, observed the partial solar eclipse. Nice. Is anyone traveling for the new eclipse? Uh, the Astro Room is traveling, guys. I'm going to Texas to go see the eclipse. I'm so excited. Um, yeah. Is anybody traveling or is anybody in the path of the eclipse? My mind is jumping everywhere, guys. Um, I'm going to check it out if we go to Sirius. I'm not slewing there right now. But, you know, Sirius is beautiful. Get that with diffraction spikes. It is, it is gorgeous. With or without. With or without. If you can get Sirius. Oh, man, it, it's just gorgeous. There's another one. Let me look at my sky guide up. I feel like there's another iconic star that you should also get. And I, I, let me see. I have a sky guide app. Regulus. There's like a really nice bright one. Besides Sirius. I feel like I'm missing one more. Um, I'm looking it up, everyone. I'm looking it up. I can't think of it. I feel like there's one more super iconic. If you can think of it, let me know in the chat. Wriggle. Okay, those are the three you want to get. I found it. I'm looking at I'm looking at my Sky Guide app on my phone right now. Okay? So let me let me go there with with Stellarium Web here on the left side of your screen. Wriggle is huge and gorgeous. Um 
a blue super giant star also in Orion of course wriggle so okay those are the those are the top three you're gonna want to get if you get your diffraction spikes okay get those three stars because it's so cool it's so cool um get the get serious get wriggle or rigel rigel I, I might be saying that wrong i feel like i hear it different ways serious rigel and beetlejuice different colors each i if, even with rigel and and serious one of them is more blue white one of them is more blue it's really pretty really pretty and show your family and friends it's so fun it's so fun and get that classic look um Project Electric Eye. I'm using my C-Star to do the video of the Eclipse. That was the main reason that I bought it. A lot of people are buying it for that. I, I hope it's going to work out well for all of us. We're experimenting this Eclipse with the C-Star. Uh, Athens from Atlanta. Athens is... Thank you, Athens. Thank you for joining. You're traveling to Austin. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Okay, I'll be down in Texas. I won't be at Austin. I'll be kind of near you, though, but... um. Okay, you're going to Austin. Very cool. Austin is a cool town. Oh, Project Electric Eye. I'm still at work. You're working right now? Wait a minute. Where are you? Oh, will you work nights? Wow. Um. This Okay, the, cent the center line for the eclipse is about 50 miles from me. Thank you, Athens, for joining. Thank you for... Thank you so much for your support. Um... Wow, thank you so much. You're traveling to Austin. Okay, you're from Atlanta. You're in Atlanta. Very cool. Um, you Okay, G. So, G. Soman, I hope, I'm, or G. S. Oman, 1960. Hope I'm saying that right. Uh, I replaced my Dwarf 2 with the Sea Star. Wow! No way! So, I'm not, I'm going to be honest. I would like to get a Dwarf uh, for fun. Um, maybe when I, if I get more support from all of you guys, I'll, I'll get a dwarf. Uh, but you're saying that you, you know, I'm, I'm noticing there's a lot of people saying that they do prefer to image with the sea star than with the dwarf. And that is, that is, that, that's interesting. I wonder what it is. Um, I don't know if the images are looking better in the Sea Star or just the simplicity. Is it more user friendly? What did you think when you compared both? Do any of you have both, both of them, the Sea Star and the Dwarf? Let me know. What do you think? You know, I, I'm loving all these smart telescopes. All of these that are coming out by different companies, Veonis, you know, the Vespera, all of those. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's bringing astronomy. Uh, it's more accessible for us that we don't want to do so much work, right? Like I have, I, to, I told you guys I have the Celestron. Uh, it's a lot of work. And I have the, the 8SC, which is big. It's, it's, I feel like it's bigger than me. And I have to like carry it and put, you know, and do all this stuff. And it's heavy. It's heavy for me. I'm a petite person. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when I got the sea star, I was like, it's just a grab and go. It's quick. Um... Charles Ellington, you're in Ohio and you're in the path of totality. Amazon has the spikes. Yes, John, the link in my description. Um, if you use that link, uh, I, I have a link in my in the description. You you can you can click on it and, and get the spikes there. If you decide to as any if any of you decide to use that link, uh, I get a small percentage of what you you know of your purchase. So um you know, it's at no extra cost to you. It's going to be the same as you're buying it regular, the regular price. But, you know, it helps support me. It helps support the channel. So I have an affiliate link on there. Feel free to uh, buy it with the link from the description. Um, Let's see. Let's see what you guys are saying. So Arthur, the eclipse. I, I don't want to miss anything that you guys are saying. The eclipse goes right through Ohio where you live in Ohio. Oh, that's fun. You don't even have to go far, maybe. Charles, you also purchased a sea star for the eclipse. G G S Omen 1960. Images are a lot better with the sea star than the dwarf too. That's what I've heard. That's exactly what I've heard. Interesting. Now, you guys are making me maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't get the dwarf. 
I don't know. And now, now I'm just like, should I, you know, should I not get it? <laughs> Is it going to be just a waste? I don't even know. Um... Athens bought my Caesar because of you. Love it. Oh, thank you so much. That's a cool name. That's a cool name, by the way. Uh, Athens, thank you. That's, that's, I'm, oh man. <laughs> thank you. I'm blushing over here. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Arthur, Caesar is way easier than my Skywatcher. 35 I. Yeah, I mean. You know, it, <laughs> okay, so some people say that, like, Athens, do you have any other telescopes, by the way, um, besides the sea star? Just curious. If not, it's okay. Just wondering, um, have you compared them? Okay, what I wanted to say, um, Arthur, so, or in all of you, so some, some people are, they make fun of smart telescopes. They make fun of the sea star because they're like, oh, I can't do... Uh, I can't, you know, it, it takes the fun out of all the work that I, that I'm, that I want to do with the, you know, with like a Celestron and, and doing my own imaging with the DSLR camera and adding a separate camera and doing all this stuff and, and doing my own alignment and, you know, and I mean, I think that's, that's fine. Like that they love that some people, that's just what they're used to and they're good at it. I mean, and, and that's a great skill to have. It's fun. It's a great hobby. Um, you know, and then you can stack your images in software, like in Cyril. Um, I think that's all good, but I'm, I'm just saying like, don't, don't, uh, don't get rid of our fun with, or don't take away the joy that we have with smart telescopes, because, you know, for some people, we don't want to do all that work, even though, yes, it's fun. I, I mean, I, when I use my Celestron, uh, eventually guys, I hope to get this live also, um, I hope to get this also live with while I'm live imaging with the C star in in the future. Not now. I, I I'm not able to do that now. Um, maybe in the in the near future, but you know, there's just a lot to set up with that. A lot more stuff going on, and I like to cover so many things. It's gonna be too much for now. Maybe in the future, as the channel keeps growing, and as I have all your support. But um, what where was I going with this? But yeah, a lot of people just talk bad about smart telescopes that they're like a toy. I mean, if it's a toy, it's a, it's it's one smart, fun thing to use, right? Toy, <laughs> and you know, but it's okay. It's like don't don't you know don't diss us because we're using smart telescopes because it's just it's it's still fun for us, you know. We don't make fun of you or talk bad about you for using the more bigger scopes, you know. Those are great. You know, and it's, you know, if you get the joy, the enjoyment out of doing all that, all the work that you do, it, it is satisfying in a way, right? It, it's to see your images and, and use a DSLR camera or those other cameras like from ZWO, uh, you know, the ASI Air and all that stuff, you know, uh, it's, it's cool too. But I mean, I'm just thinking it's even cooler to have a grab and go. You can travel with it, like, you know, like the, whether it's a dwarf, you know. The Bayonis, the other ones, Vespera, uh, the Sea Star, you know, they're so easy to use. It just takes me like, you know, what does it take? Like five minutes or less? You know, it's so, so cool. Athens, okay, you have the same Celestron that I have. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, um, what are you guys saying here? John, it looks like you got the spikes from Amazon. Very cool. Yeah. Arthur, what do you think uh the Skywatcher 35i? How is that one? I know it's easier, your C Star, but uh how do you how do, uh, you know, how long have you had that one? Um Okay, Project Electric Eye, I use my Canon 6D and Skyguide Pro normally. Okay. Okay. Skyguider Pro. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the ease of use, Arthur. Yeah, lightweight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Project Electric Eye. The C-Star is stupid simple. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Okay, John. Yeah. Read a local astronomy club, reviewed both scopes, and you, yeah, decided to buy the buy C-Star to loan out over Dwarf. Okay. Okay, Project Electric Eye. 
Um, guys, I need to do a separate video on the accessories that I use. Um, there's something else out that I have on, on the Sea Star that I also use if you live in very light polluted skies. It's like a dew shield cap. I'm going to make a video as how I use all of those things. Okay. Okay, John, I see what you mean. You mean that you understand. Uh, and then you, when I buy it, I will use your link. Thanks, John. <laughs> no worries. No worries. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure either. Thanks, John. Appreciate that. Thank you so much for your support, John. I know you're a huge supporter of this channel. You're, you're a big part of as to why I'm doing what, what I keep doing. And all of you that are on, I have... I have more viewers right now than earlier. I can't believe it. I know it's really late for some of you guys right now. This is literally blowing my mind. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, wow. Okay, what I was saying. The... Uh, John, before I move on. John, you're one of the ones that donated with the Buy Me A Coffee link. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, some of you have donated already to the channel Buy Me A Coffee. It's so simple. It's quick. Feel free to use the link in the description. Um, no logins, nothing super fancy, nothing difficult to do. Uh, and you can donate to the channel, small monetary donation. And it just helps me, you know, to upgrade my, upgrade everything, guys, my gear, everything. So I can get this better and better for you. Um, but what I was saying is that I want to do a bit separate video on the accessories that i use i have like a, a portable charger too you can you know you can get your c star can only last so many hours if you don't have the you know when, when you use a dew shield it just hit me that i did i did not turn on the dew shield and i should have because it's getting chilly here tonight it's getting chilly and i know it's gonna form some dew right now guys oh uh beetlejuice is looking amazing still looking amazing um but uh yeah i forgot to turn on my dew shield it's just hitting me <laughs> that's okay <laughs> that's okay it is what it is it is what it is okay um that's okay that's okay and yeah, so I'll do a video eventually i want to do a video of all the accessories that i use for the sea star i have a portable charger keeps it charging you know to keep it charging longer it's in the description i honestly think i need to put an even buy an even better portable charger so go to the link in the description if you want to get a charger to make that c star run longer right your your charge um the battery the battery how long it lasts get an you know from that same company they build awesome ones the one that i have in the description of the portable charger get an even better one I want to get a better one. Okay, so, um, yeah. Okay, so you're saying the big difference between uh, Omen 1960, the big difference is that the dwarf has a wider field of view, but the sea star images are clearer. I am selling my dwarf. You're selling your dwarf. Okay, maybe the verdict's in. I, I, I think I'm not going to get the dwarf, guys. I don't know. I don't know. Anybody else have the dwarf? What are y'all saying? Anybody else? Wow. Hmm. The OTA Arthur is out of my smart level. Yeah, some stuff is a little complex. I know. Sometimes we just, it's just so much time. It's so time consuming. And you just want to get straight to it. Project Electric Eye, because you said you're working on making double time right now. <laughs> Why not sit on YouTube and watch good content? Thank you. Thank you, Project Electric Eye. What's the meaning behind your name? I like that. Um, Athens, any news on the Mosaic software update? If you saw my la my last live stream, I talked about it. I'm assuming that's what you're referring to, that Mosaic is coming. Oh man, I know we can't wait, guys. I have not heard, I have not heard anything. But you know what I've noticed with with the, with uh, ZWO, the company that makes the C Star is that they all of a sudden will push out an update and I feel like I won't know. That's what happened with these last two updates that they did. Um, you know, now I'm following them on, on social media and stuff. So make sure you're following CSR on social media because then they'll put on there whenever there's an update 
you know, a software update, but sometimes I feel like I've missed them. I'm like, oh, they, it's been out for a couple of days and I didn't know. So, uh, yeah, we, we need to be checking when they do updates. Um, I haven't heard anything else when it's coming. I really hope it's soon. I also hope they make some type of update for the Eclipse, everyone. Like, you know, can they please do something <laughs> so we can make sure we get some good eclipse images since so many people are buying this for the eclipse um killian it looks like it's exploding with how bright it is it it do you mean beetlejuice i know yeah um <laughs> they're saying like i was saying earlier it's it's something is happening right now it's like literally like boiling uh, and it's creating a weird illusion in scopes. That's what I was trying to get tonight with Beetlejuice. Because like I said, it's trending. It's back up on the news again. Beetlejuice is trending. Um, oh, Project Electric Eye. The name was for our high altitude ballooning group. Oh, the song Electric Eye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, interesting. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, guys. Thank you for your support. Let's see. So let's see if the moon, the moon and the Pleiades are still looking nice in conjunction right now. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Should we do it, guys? Should we switch to the moon? Should have taken one last picture shot of uh, Beetlejuice before I slewed to the moon, but it is what it is. It happened. Andy, are you are you in the UK, Andy? Has anyone tried using the sea star in an equatorial wedge? Oh, I think several people have. I haven't yet. I've thought about it, but I feel like I don't want to mess with it too much. Um, yeah, I know. I know there's people that have. I've seen it online on forums and on videos too. Yep. All of you guys, where you're at, can you let me know? Can you let me know, all of you that are watching, where you're at? Let me know where you're at, guys. Those of you who haven't told me yet. Um, I'm trying to get the sea star on the moon. Because it's, you know, the Pleiades is, is right there. Can we get at least one star of the Pleiades in there? <laughs> in one frame. I know. I uh, my dew heater apparition. Where are you watching from? Is my dew heater on? I haven't. I should turn it on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I got it on now. Dawn. Whoa. I'm having a glitch. Dawn in southern Indiana. Clouded. Dodging tornadoes. Wow, a lot of you guys are having bad weather. I was saying earlier, we had bad weather here. That finally cleared up today. I, I was worried I wasn't going to be able to do a live stream. Andy in the UK. What time is it over there? Oh, man. Cool. Whoa, my moon is looking crazy, guys, on my sea star. Is there a glitch? I didn't have that dew heater on this whole time. Australia! What time is it over there? Apparition. I 
I just hit cancel right on this on the C star right when why is the moon looking crazy? Oh, it's on stargazing, guys. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? <laughs> okay. There we go. Ooh, look at that. It's it's like rumbling. Guys, um I don't think I'll be able to see the conjunction of the Pleiades. Um, okay. Let me get out of here. Let me go to the star, star days, or the sky atlas, excuse me. I was like, why is it looking crazy? Has that ever happened to you? This is live, guys. Anything can go wrong or anything can go right. <laughs> okay. I don't think I'll be able to get any of these stars from the Pleiades in there. I would like to try. Apparition, it is 2 p.m. on a Friday over where you're at in Australia. Aha. Uh -huh. It's already Friday. And believe it or not, guys, it is still Thursday <laughs> where I'm at. <laughs> March 14th. It is 9.20 p.m. The crescent moon. I wish I could get somehow the con you know the conjunction of the Pleiades in there. Wow, look at I feel like there's so much turbulence. Look at the the way it's shaking. You guys see that? Oh, let me put it on raw mode. You see it on the C star guys, the on the right side of your screen? Andy, you are up early. 4.20 a.m. Are you working or you're just... Wow. Oof. Oh, check out that. Looks like a comet. I mean, not a comet. Looks like a satellite just went by. You saw it on that solarium web. Wow, if I could just get one of those stars in the sea star. I, I don't know. But I think, you know, honestly, the the brightness of the moon might wash it out too much, right? Like if I'm trying to get those stars in there. I think it's going to be too difficult because, yeah, I think the brightness of the moon kind of washes it out. But when I went outside, I saw, right with the naked eye, I saw the, the crescent moon earlier, about an hour ago I went out and I did see the moon in conjunction with uh, the Pleiades and it looks so pretty. It looks so nice. Um... Wow. Oh, you, there it goes, another satellite. Can you guys see that? It's like traveling through the screen on the Stellarium web website. It's cool. It's so live as well. Like it just shows you like if the International Space Station happens to cross by, you can just, whoop, you can just kind of see it. <laughs> it's, it's a cool, uh, the way it's like simulates everything.
guys, all of you that are watching, hit the like button. Let me know if you're enjoying it because, you know, um, if you, when you hit the like, what YouTube does is that it, the more people that like it, the more it'll push it out to other people. Uh, my channel, my videos, you know, and this just helps keep my channel growing. So I can make this my nine to five, like I was telling you guys. <laughs> so, yeah. Have you guys ever seen the moon in planetary mode on the sea star? It looks really cool. It looks really, really cool. Guys, you know what I'm doing right now? Okay, you know what? I want to... Okay. Before I sign off, I need to talk about this real quick. You guys have seen my video on, some people are, are have made fun of my video where I'm doing the 100x zoom on Jupiter and they think it's a lie, <laughs> okay? I've gotten some trash comments and I'm just like, what? Like, let me show you. So you see right now how much I'm zoomed into the moon? So if you do the, yeah, you can do the 1x, 2x, 4x, but you don't, I don't even use that mode. Just use your fingers to do the pinch zoom, the pinch zoom feature, uh, the pinch zoom in, and you can zoom in as much as you want. This is what I'm doing right now with the moon. That's exactly what I did with Jupiter. That's literally all I did. And people are telling me like, that's impossible. And I'm like, no, it's very, anybody can do that. Uh, Jupiter hasn't been looking good lately for me if I try to image it. Um, but when it was, about a month ago, a couple months ago, when I posted that video, I did it. You know, all you have to do is play with the plus minus, the brightness mode and, and the scale, the scale of the brightness and just get it to where you can see the bands of Jupiter. And that's it. And just zoom in. Just use your fingers to do the pinch, right? And zoom in. That's it, guys. It's, it's That's real. <laughs> there was no... Uh, I'm not posting, uh, what do you call it, clickbait or like, I'm not posting, um, you know, I, I, this is everything that I'm posting is, is real, guys. I'm not faking anything. This is as real as it can get, even in my regular, you know, in my regular videos. Like, uh, anyway, just, just want to let you guys know, I, some people are just funny and they act like, you know, maybe because they can't do it, they feel like I'm lying, but you can do it. You can do it. It, it you know, it's not going to happen in, in, in one second, but you play around with it. Play around with the settings. You can do it. You can do, let me know if you've done it. You know, and that's what I meant by 100x zoom. Obviously, in the C star, it doesn't have a button that says 100x zoom. I just mean like you can, like I'm doing the moon right now. Is this gorgeous, guys? Um... Is this incredible that with the sea star, with the little smart telescope for the price? Look at what you're getting, right? Um, look at what you're getting. It's it's just awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, John. Thank you for, for staying, uh, for being here. Appreciate everyone that's logged in, that's watching. I didn't think, I thought my live stream was going to be about 20 minutes and it, we've been on about an hour and a half. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.
all of you who haven't uh, subscribed yet, who are watching, please subscribe and watch. Subscribe and hit the bell, I mean, and like so you can get uh, updates whenever I post more videos. Let's see how much we can zoom in, guys. Guys, this is this is what I mean. Look at this. I mean, come on. That is really cool. Obviously, we're not seeing this, uh, you know, as the Hubble or the, the Hubble telescope or <laughs> some telescope out in space would see it or, or other telescopes that people use, you know. With my Celestron, this looks incredible. With my Celestron telescope, the moon looks incredible. I would say better, right? It makes sense. It's a bigger scope. It's an 8-inch scope. But we can just get it quick and easy like this. We know, look at what we can see. We can practically see where the Apollo landings were. <laughs> this is awesome, guys. Look at all the turbulence. Wow. Yeah, I'm just zooming in. This is absolute. I mean, it, it blows my mind, guys. This stuff never gets old for me. Being able to see it like this, this never gets old. This is, in, this is absolutely incredible. The moon is an incredible object. We, we can't deny it. Bye, Apparition. Thank you so much. Going back to work, no problem. I'm going to have to go to work in about 12 hours. So <laughs> got to get got to get some sleep soon. Thank you all of you who are still in. Arthur, you have yours on a camera tripod. Your Sea Star? Huh. Is that what you mean? Are, is, are any of you imaging right now while watching the Astro Room? If you have clear skies, are any of you actually imaging or with any telescope as you're watching? Guys, I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it a night. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for watching. We've had so much fun. It's been an hour and a half of a lot of fun. I did not expect this literally did not expect this thank you everyone for your support make sure to subscribe make sure to like make sure you hit the bell that lets me know you want me to continue doing live streams uh bringing you more space news all this stuff live imaging more tips more tricks you know that's my thing i want to bring you guys tips tricks with the c star thank you so much uh thank you so much for watching good night everyone or have a good beautiful day uh have a beautiful friday uh or have a good night thank you so much everyone uh enjoy your weekend and stay tuned i'll be coming back i'll be i'll be signing off i'll be signing off and i'll go outside and get the sea star and i might keep it on just a little bit more as i'm wrapping it up thank you everyone thank you so much andy you're welcome you're welcome uh arthur good night thank you so much Thanks, everyone. Astro Room, your very own portal to the cosmos. That's what it is. That's what I'm trying to do. Thanks, everyone.